How's it? This is Hoala Grevy. Thanks for joining us for another installment of HIPAA Center. We're very fortunate here to have Roger Cohen in town from New York for a conference, and we're going to dig into it. He is the life sciences partner at Google Proctor, and he's also our HIPAA attorney, and we're very happy with the firm and Roger's work. He has also been recognized as a leading lawyer by the Legal 500 United States and as a rising star in both Law 360 and Super Lawyers. So, Roger, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, Hawala. Awesome, man. Okay, so can you share with us a little bit more about uh, what your role is at Goodwood Proctor? Sure. I'm a healthcare regulatory lawyer and I represent healthcare services clients uh, and digital health clients, uh, providing advice on things like HIPAA, uh, data privacy and security, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, reimbursement issues, and uh, all sorts of other healthcare regulatory matters. That's great. And uh, it seemed like a big deal. There was a press release uh, last year when you joined Goodwin Proctor, and there was a big list of accomplishments and stuff. So we're very uh, thankful you're here today. Um, I'm glad to be here uh, and glad to be with Goodwin. Awesome, man. So you, I understand you were on a panel yesterday, and the topic was Hot Topics in Healthcare Regulation for Health IT and Digital Health. Uh, for those of us who weren't able to attend, uh, what are some of the highlights from that? Sure. Um, you know, I think there are a couple of big, big things going on right now for uh, digital health companies. Uh, one, uh, under the 21st Century Cures Act, uh, there are the, a number of provisions related to the interoperability of electronic health records. Um, the Center for Medicare Medicaid Service is, is really uh, required to the push interoperability uh, as a result of, of that new statute. We also covered some interesting developments on, under HIPAA. Um, there was a little controversy uh, around Christmas uh, related to the permissibility of uh, texting protected health information. CMS had made some indication that that was uh, perhaps not permitted. Uh, CMS has recently come out and clarified that texting of PHI uh, using a secure platform is permissible. Okay, so it is permissible. Yes, ab absolutely. CMS was, was very clear about that. Got it. Thank you for sharing. Um, now, lately we've been covering the HIPAA conduit rule exception uh, in our own blog posts and content. Um, and one of the questions uh, one of our customers had was, say something like um, Apple, um, Apple FaceTime. Sure. Does that apply for the HIPAA conduit rule or not, it's kind of an opaque area as I understand it. Um, I, the HIPAA conduit exception is, is a reasonably narrow exception. Um, sort of the, the traditional example of a HIPAA conduit is the post office or FedEx or, or UPS. And either sort of the phone company um, sort of setting aside voice, voicemail, which is a, a slightly more complicated uh, issue uh, in, in tech uh, ISDs. Mm -hmm. I would want to understand sort of the, the, how uh, FaceTime works and, and what it is to, to data if any data is stored. And that's really sort of the key in, in the application. The conduit exception um, is sort of does the conduit or, or the entity that may be a conduit does it have only sort of transitory access to uh, or possession of, of health information um, or is it uh, sort of storing health information over a longer period of time? That's what my conclusion was on my layman's uh, research on it because, you know, you've got, I'm sure they're logging IP address, um, date, time, maybe a person's name. I mean, I just... Apple doesn't sign BA business associate agreements uh, for their, their consumer grade services, and I just felt like this didn't fit a HIPAA conduit rule. I, I would advise uh, talk to your uh, HIPAA lawyer uh, prior to concluding that uh, Apple FaceTime is, uh, can be a conduit. Got it. Got it. Can you share with us, Stan, you, you set a new precedent in New York by convincing an appellate court to recognize an implied private right of action for healthcare providers under New York's prompt payment law. For those of us who are not attorneys, what the heck is that? And sure. uh, so maybe some an overview. Sure. So in New York, like a, a lot of other states, passed a law that says that 
uh, health insurers have to pay bills from health care providers uh, within a certain amount of time. Um, and they passed that law because health care providers were having problems getting timely paid. Um, and there's an incentive for insurers to, to hold back funds. They, they make interest on, on the money they're holding and sort of the longer they can uh, spread out the time between getting a bill and having to pay it, the better it is for, for their business. Um, so it, New York passed this law. Uh, one court, uh, you know, one healthcare provider brought a, a lawsuit against health insurer claiming the insurer was paying them too low and it violated the law. Um, this, this court had said, well, a, a health care provider can't sue someone and recover money under for violation of this law. Only the insurance department can enforce this law. Um, you can't bring private lawsuits. Um, we had a client that uh, had a problem with an insurer that owed it a substantial sum of, of money um, and they hadn't been paying their bills timely. and. Uh, we didn't think the prior decision was uh, the correct interpretation of the law. We included in our, our lawsuit a claim that this was a violation of, of the prompt payment law, and we were able to uh, convince the lower court that it's, uh, this other court had got it wrong and that uh, health care providers could bring uh, an action under, under this law. Um, it then went up on appeal, and we were able to prevail in the, uh, in the appeals court as well. Um, and it's been a, a powerful precedent for, for health care providers. Um, there's 12% interest on, under the law per, per year for late payments. Um, and that's an incentive to get insurers to pay in a timely way. Um, and to, you know, it's, it's very difficult when you have a dispute with a health insurer. Um, it, you sort of start, you know, you say, well, you owe me 100 cents and if, if that's all you can get, it's hard to, you're going to get less than 100 cents uh, if you settle it and, or if you have to litigate it, you're, you're going to run up a bill and, and get, walk away with less than 100 cents. So that sort of sets the bar a little higher and gives you a little leverage uh, in the negotiation, which is very important. Sounds like you're able to provide a lot of value to your client uh, and but, probably a lot of others. Uh, we, we certainly try, try to do that. That's great, man. We love doing that at Pawbox. I mean, that's, yeah. Well, oh, we're trying to provide value. <laughs> what do you see as the biggest concern for digital health in 2018? Uh, you know, I think data security uh, continues to be a, a tremendously important uh, concern for digital health companies. Um, uh, you know, there's a sort of continuing uh, HIPAA enforcement is, has ramped up over, over the last couple of years. Uh, there have been some very significant breaches in, in healthcare, and there are various reasons why healthcare information is particularly valuable. Um, and, and so I think uh, data security, HIPAA compliance, uh, sort of continues to be at the top of the list of, of issues for digital health companies. Anthem had the uh, 80, yeah, breach. $115 million fine last year from, uh, from OCR. Uh, new, new record. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Reach from two or three years ago. And uh, and OCR continues to be active on, in uh, bringing enforcement actions. Um, the audit program is has ramped up. Um, so I, I think uh, more more than ever before, um, it, it, it's really imperative to uh, be on top of HIPAA compliance and uh, privacy and data security. You know. I was at a conference where former HHS head Tom Price spoke at, and shortly after that, a political article came out which referenced the blog post that I wrote of the conference, and fast forward to today, there's no head of HHS, I think there's an acting head. Uh, and since the Office of Civil Rights, OCR, is within HHS, in your professional opinion, do you feel that slows down enforcements or fines in any way by them not having a replacement head or no, I, not even matter? No, I don't think so. Um, you know, I think there was sort of, uh, as is often the case uh, when, when the new uh, administration came in, there was a, you know, a little slowdown in, in cases. And I think that's, that's typical sort of the new, you know, the, the, the new administration wants to get a handle on things and there may be a delay in cases that are sort of in process of getting resolved while 
help people sort of get up to speed. And uh, but but now that's uh, uh, we see OCR again resolving cases, um, and I think it'll continue sort of uh, you know despite the change in leadership at, at OCR. Um, I think it'll uh, continue uh, its active role in, in enforcing HIPAA. Gosh, we just, um, I think last week we wrote an, uh, a post on an organization that paid a $2.3 million HIPAA fine and um, forced them into Chapter 11. So I thought that was something I hadn't seen before as far as insolvency and HIPAA fines. So that's uh, yeah, I, stark morning. Uh, I, I, I think that's true. I think sort of the trend in enforcement is fines are uh, getting bigger. Um, and um, I, I think we're seeing not only that, but sort of more, more settlements announced as well. Um, you know, I think that's sort of no accident. I think uh, OCR has more funding, more staff, um, and that's resulting in, in more enforcement activity. So we've mentioned fines, OCR, data security. Do these overlap with some of the more common concerns your clients have when it comes to HIPAA? Absolutely. Um, so you know, one, I think uh, I get questions all, all the time about uh, security incidents, potential breaches, et, et cetera, and help clients uh, figure out what are, what are their obligations. Um, I help clients in, in responding to uh, in, uh, re data requests from from OCR when when there are uh, matters that are reported and OCR uh, has questions um, and uh, I certainly continue to work a lot with clients on on the front end on figuring out HIPAA compliance um, and sort of uh, particularly um, as d data becomes more important in in healthcare because of the the trend towards value based care. Um, and more than ever, it's imperative to share data with, uh, with other uh, healthcare providers, with health information exchanges for research, um, for uh, AI. AI. Uh, there are questions uh, about what you can do with information, what your obligations are with respect for information, what you need in your agreements. Uh, with partners, so I continue to uh, do a lot of work on, on those kinds of things with clients. Uh, that's cool. Thank you. How's it? This is Hoala Grevy. I'm here with Roger Cohen from Goodwin Proctor, and we're going to do another HIPAA Center lightning round. Ready? Ready. Great. What's your favorite Hawaiian food? Uh, poke at the moment. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Good choice. Have you ever been kayak fishing? I've been kayaking, I've been fishing, but I've never been kayaking and fishing at the same time. Cool. Who would win in the octagon? A polar bear or a silverback gorilla? Uh, I'm going with a silverback. Oh, contrarian. Contrarian view. Interesting. It's a tight battle within Pow Box. A 50-50 split. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Last Halloween costume? Um, Dr. Nick from The Simpsons. Oh, which character is that? Um, he's a, he's a, doc, he's a, is that a regular character? Yeah, uh, he's, he has a recurring, sometimes recurring role. I'll have to Google that. Yes. What's your favorite right. go-to karaoke jam? Um, it's got a grateful Grateful Dead. Something. Really? Yes. Karaoke? Yeah. Oh, that's good. How many times have you seen the movie Big Lebowski? Uh, too many to count. I'm a big fan. Same here. Dude abides. What book or books are you reading now? Uh, I'm in the middle of uh, Bruce Springsteen's autobiography, which is great. I recommend it. Do you think it's ghostwritten in any way, or is it Let's say very it, his style? I, I think he wrote it. Yeah? it. It has his, seems to have his voice uh, in it. That's cool, because I read a lot of autobiographies and like hmm interesting okay and when's the last time you sent a fax uh it has been a long time since i've sent a fax That's thankfully because <laughs> yeah. we're trying to kill the fax <laughs> thank you very much roger oh, my, appreciate my that pleasure. my pleasure awesome. good to be with you same here